and the Jerusalem the American Olympic, which is something that has been written and rewritten. Hi, everyone. How are you? Can you all hear us? Yes, we can. Hello. Hi, great. great. I'm going to ask a few things real quickly before we get started. If you wouldn't mind just muting your speakers so that we don't hear any background noise and everybody can hear us clearly. If you could, if you have any questions that you want to submit, just submit them in the chat for now. We'll have time at the end for some questions and answers. And um, don't forget to register for our September 7th kickoff um, once you sign up, but we'll go through that a little bit later. But I want to introduce myself. My name is Tara Famularo Del Bianco. I'm the director of the Schoolhouse Anywhere. Hi, everyone. My name is Mimosa Jones Tunney. I'm the founder of the Schoolhouse, as well as the American Emergent Curriculum. And I just want to welcome everyone tonight. Thanks for spending this hour and a half with us. We really appreciate it. We're coming to you from our elementary two classroom here in New York, where our team is getting ready to start the school year off in about 10 days. So welcome. I'm going to start off before uh, Tara tells you about her story, just telling or sharing how we got here today. And um, I'll start that by sort of backing up seven years ago. I could go back 10 or 11 when I got into education, but seven years ago is good for the purposes of tonight, where I had just nowhere to put my four and five year old. I maybe you can relate to that tonight. I had them in a Montessori school, which I felt like wasn't at all connected with what I knew about Dr. Montessori. Um, you probably know that you can start a Montessori school anywhere in the world with just a telephone and a couple of small chairs. So um, very easy to use the term Montessori and not be connected to the methodology. And then I looked into public schools and found a number of problems with public schools that I'll discuss in a minute. And then I also looked at traditional private schools and found that there wasn't much difference with between public and private. It was really just that there were higher hedges in private and you were paying a lot more money. But the same systemic problems in terms of curriculum design and childhood development still existed there. So I started working on this 10 or 11 years ago, really got into it about seven years ago. And what I found was this. We need to redefine what a good education, what a great education is in the United States of America. And it came down to four key things. The first was curriculum, that there wasn't a curriculum that was being practiced in the United States that was timely, contemporary, and updated. In other words, we had curriculums where they were using information or curricula, where they were using information from 5, 10, sometimes even 20 years ago. What does that mean for your child is that all the latest discoveries in physics or paleontology or, oh, yes, can you put on your screens? I would love to see your faces. Some faces yes. are popping up. That's awesome. Um, all of these discoveries weren't making it to the curricula. And so you have the systemic problem of just not having the most current information. There was another problem when I looked at a curriculum in a particular school, that none of it was interconnected. And so we all know when we watch a film and we go through the first act of the film and the second act of, of the film, if you just turned that movie off after the second act, you'd be pretty disappointed. You wouldn't know what happened. You wouldn't know how things were interconnected. And that's how our children feel when we're teaching biology over here, we're teaching English over here, we're teaching math over here, and none of it is making sense to the whole. So that was a huge gap in curriculum. Number two was educator culture. So when I started the school five years ago, we had hired educators that would come in that could not even go through the review process. In fact, as you're about to see, we pretty much threw out all of the jargon that you see in schools today. So we don't call them reviews anymore. We call them goal setting meetings. Um, we don't have an admin, we have a headquarters and that headquarters is in service to the educator. So you had educators that didn't have a culture they weren't on the same team. They weren't playing for the same purpose. And I found that to be a real waste of the great, great talents that I've seen in educators. Number three, the environment. 
I couldn't believe that every time I walked by a school or drove past a school, it looked like a prison, just full stop. It was the same block walls. It had terrible landscaping. And by the way, here in New York, what they like to do is they like to actually just redo the outside. And then you go inside where the children spend most of their time and it looks institutional. So here you have children who are just starting their lives. They want to see beauty and they want to be surrounded by the most fantastic things. And it isn't that at all. It's really missing any type of love or spirit and um, aesthetics in the classroom. And then the fourth thing that I realized was that there was a very little understanding of childhood development. So if you're not aligning your school or what you practice in school with the stage of development that that particular child is in, how can you hope to succeed? So if you're giving the same work to a nine-year-old that is at the apex of imagination, doesn't really care about order anymore, for those of you who have eight, nine-year-olds where the socks are everywhere, right? Doesn't re really want storytelling, really wants uh, the ability to move, still wants that one hour recess. The average recess here in New York is 15 minutes, complete tragedy. Um, it's very different than a child who is three and four, who's at the development stage for order, right? Is at the development stage for language and is at the development stage for movement, but in a different way. So there I was looking at all of these things that weren't lining up. And I said to my husband, I think we're going to build a school because as much as I'd been an education writer for the last 10 or 11 years, if we didn't actually build the model for people to see how school could be in the United States in the 21st century, I wasn't sure anyone was going to really get what we were looking to do. And so we have, and that's what the schoolhouse is. It's a brick and mortar school here in New York. It's 160 children. It could easily be 250 children. We've had a wait list for the last four years. It's 36 educators who not only have master's degrees, but have AMI training, also get American Emergent training. We just came out of that this week. In fact, we're still in it, which brings together team spirit and the very latest in pedagogical science. And um, we opened our doors. Here we are five years later, the happiest kids that I've ever seen. That's number one. Children that are oftentimes a grade ahead. That's number two. And number three, critical thinkers and problem solvers. So we've now had graduates that have gone on to other schools who, who, yeah, the easy part is, are they on honor rolls? Are they doing great? Absolutely. But they're creating things. They're starting businesses. They're thinking for themselves. And our mission was very simple when we started, and that was to build the best elementary school in the country. That was it, right? Small potatoes. It was not a big mission. Um, what we wanted to do is say, enough with the world, dumbing down our kids, not moving into the 21st century. We have the pedagogies, which I'll talk about just to round up, that have taught us over the last 120 years how we need to be educating our children. Why aren't we doing it? And I just sat with that. Why aren't we doing it? We have the ability, we have the will as people across this country, starting with the 40 of you tonight, so we went on to start this program for all of you, for every town, for every parent in the country who has had enough. And there's two things that I wanna say before I just talk briefly about the curricula. The first is my husband and I have never believed that your child's education is for sale. Education should not be a for-profit entity. This is not, and this has never been. This is a nonprofit school. My husband and I invested the initial money. Um, I've worked here for six years for <laughs> zero dollars. Um, Tara's about at zero dollars. <laughs> um, worked is an understatement. By yeah, way. worked is an understatement. Um, this, this is a birthright. Your child, when they're born at zero, at one day, has a birthright to learn. 
to be in the very best environments. And this has become our passion to give that to the world for as low a cost as we can do um, and keep it nonprofit. And the other thing that is crucially important that we believe in education is that the only way to change the country currently today is to put a schoolhouse in every town in America. So we are done with reforming public education. We are done with the for-profit entities that are all screen-based these days. My Instagram feed is full of them. We learned nothing from COVID that school should not be at this development stage, zero to 12 online. Um, the only way to really see a difference in the news every night is to start from zero to 12 because the grown-ups are gone, right? This is where we need to start back to. Before I turn it off, turn it over to Tara and we have a little conversation here, I wanna talk about the curriculum itself. So first and foremost, we know that there are four pedagogies that have worked beautifully for the last, well, you could go back thousands of years, but let's just say the last 150 years. The first is the Montessori method. That was developed by Dr. Montessori, not to be confused with Montessori schools. She was a pedagogical scientist. She's still today the only pedagogical scientist that developed her method based on what she observed. So she had a, a school, a classroom in Italy in 1907 and observed three to six year olds and what they did. And she has many, many books out there. All of them are incredible. What we love about Dr. Montessori is her philosophy of the child. So respect, dignity, follow the child with structure. We have a lot of structure and we love the materials because from zero to 12, your child is tactile. So they are gonna wanna touch things, move things, manipulate things until they move into that reasoning mind, that abstract space. The second is Reggio Emilia which was founded by Loris Malaguzzi in Italy in the late 1950s. That was a process by which you could use artistic materials, creative materials to represent what you were learning in the classroom. And I'm not just talking about paper and pencil. So every classroom here has an atelier in the classroom. Because one of the things we started to do at the schoolhouse is we started solving problems. Our first year, that's not working. We're an entrepreneurial nonprofit, right? So you wanna solve the problems when they're, when they're coming at you. And what we found is one of the worst things you can do at this age is march the children off to 45 minutes of art class every week because they're at the height of their creativity. So you want them in the classroom and you want them to have a variety of materials. So I'm looking over at our E2 classroom right now We've got oregano and macaroni um, pasta and leaves and flowers in addition to all the acrylics and everything else. So they can start to express themselves in all mediums. Number three is the Socratic seminar. I think we can all agree that no one can talk to each other anymore. And so Socratic seminar became one of the hallmark practices here at the schoolhouse where we are able to get in Socratic circle Every child down to the age of three here knows what a Socratic circle is. And we're gonna start talking about things. And primary is pretty simple. You like green, you like blue. I hate you for liking green. I hate you for <laughs> liking blue. Okay, well, we could just express ourselves and get through that. As we get older, it becomes more complicated. But remember, the beautiful thing about Socratic is it's not debate. So this isn't about, I'm gonna force you to believe in me or what I believe, I'm just gonna share information with you. And number four is project-based learning. So what I really felt in my soul and working with 36 educators over the last five years is that each of these pedagogies alone is not enough. Putting them together creates just about the richest curriculum you can create. And so with project-based learning, it was about having our children, our learners here, start companies, start organizations. And so it's kind of mind blowing what they've been able to do in the last five years. We had a elementary one classroom and they decided to start a company called Edible Bubbles, which I had never heard of. So the bubbles you blow and then they made them blueberry flavored. And so you would eat them as you blew them and they made almost $3,000 in that project. And they got to learn PLs, 
how you sell them, what the marketing is, what the packaging is. And so this idea that real world skills need to be put into curriculum is, is, is so paramount, right? That's the pedagogical part. The second part to the curriculum is that it's so interwoven. So this year in cycle one, it's three cycles. You have three years to get through this curriculum. And so this year, cycle one, we're starting with the Americas. So North and South America, Native America. You'll see throughout all the curriculum cycles that once we leave Native America, it's colonial America. It's the constitution, it's the civil war for elementary. And then we go up into the industrial revolution in the 1920s, three years. It's also three years in terms of the United States government. So this year is the judicial branch. And so we'll be learning about the Scopes trial and the Cherokee cases, right? Next year, executive branch. So all these things start to get woven in and your language, your math, your science are woven in. So we open this year with really heavy botany studies as we do every year, botany being kind of the key to the whole planet. And those botany studies then are connected to Native American plants. When we did botany last year and we were studying Europe, we were studying Austrian plants. So that's just one example of dozens of examples of how the curriculum is interconnected. Before I turn it off to Tara, that was long, but was I think great. I got everything in. No, it was fabulous. Uh, uh, two years ago during COVID, we have always wanted to put a schoolhouse in every town, not from the top down. It's up to all of you. It, you know your communities. So we have always just been the hub of saying, we can help you build that school. Um, and that has always been our focus. But what we realized is with COVID, we had doubled in the United States, the amount of homeschoolers. And so why not take what we're doing here at the schoolhouse and put it into a homeschool format, not screen-based for your child, but screen-based for you to learn or to hire an educator to teach your children. And that's what we started to do with the schoolhouse anywhere two years ago, which is just launching now in our very first webinar with you. So I'm gonna turn it over to Tara with that to talk a little bit about that particular program at the Schoolhouse. So I'm gonna make a second plea for you to put your cameras on so we can see yeah. your beautiful faces. It'd be a lot more pleasant for us to be able to talk to you <laughs> rather than to your name. Oh, that's good. So I'm Tara, I'm the director of the Schoolhouse Anywhere. My children were very fortunate to attend the Schoolhouse when they first opened up. And so that's how I became acquainted with Mimosa. We had the most wonderful experience, but after some certain changes of circumstances, we decided to move out of state. So we actually relocated to Florida in 2021. And in my relocation to Florida, um, in searching for my children's school, there was absolutely nothing that compared to where they went here in New York. So I was actually an attorney in New York City Family Courts for Abused and Neglected Children. And in speaking with Mimosa, we had sort of discussed how could we bring this, which was ultimately her goal, but how can we bring this elsewhere? How can I bring this closer to where I'm moving? So because there was nothing for my kids that I found would meet their developmental needs in any fashion, I decided to homeschool them. So in homeschooling them, that's a whole nother world that opened up to me <laughs> that I had, you know, no idea about, but quickly learned uh, that learning curve was tremendous for me. And in searching for different programs for my children, because, you know, of their ages, they were elementary school ages or they are elementary school ages. And so children of that age really need to work with their peers, with their friends. So I wanted that interaction for them. However, every type of homeschooling group that I found was either um, completely unschooling, which is great for some, just didn't work well for my children. They preferred a little bit of structure, um, discipline, and um, guidance more so than just unschooling. But other than that, then it was either um, part-time public school with really disjointed curricula and screen time. I couldn't believe that I'm homeschooling. I sent my children to this co-op twice a week and they're using screens at the co-op. I, I was really, I was baffled. And then any, anything else that Florida offers you, they have a virtual learning. So children are again, sitting in front of screens 
or it's very disjointed and you go for a little science co-op over here for you know one day a week or you're heading to a pond over here and there's no connectedness and i looked back on my life and i thought what's the things that i remember from school and the biggest thing that i always remember from school i don't know about you but is that i grew up with the same people i learned the same people i took back those feelings and those memories of the people that i was with more so than i did um what I learned, yeah, especially elementary school. And so I wanted to kind of create that for my children. So Mimosa and I got together and that's when we discussed Schoolhouse Anywhere. Yeah. So the Schoolhouse Anywhere is a way for you as parents to bring the schoolhouse into your home and into your community. And we put together this pretty awesome website that uh, will be released shortly. In fact, it's actually open now for you guys to sign up. So if you go to our website, tshanywhere.org, and you'll see the let's get started. That'll bring you right into where you can log in and actually put all of your information. And really get, I know you got started with the email. So it allows you to get started um, to get into the program. So I'm just going to ask whoever is unmuted to uh, remute yourself, please. So in this program, there are many, many things that are going to be there for you to help support you on this homeschooling journey. One of the things that I found when I was homeschooling my children is that it was overwhelming. And you never knew, you never knew where to stop and where to start. You know, you kind of, I never felt like I was doing enough. Mm -hmm. I was always, you know, I was always playing that teacher role, that right. educator role. And I but sort sometimes of, you just want to be mom. I just wanted to be mom sometimes. Yeah. And so that was sort of an important thing when I was creating this program with Mimosa about the fact that we were going to run with the school year and we mm -hmm. were going to stop when it was summer and it was holidays. So you can kind of switch those hats a little bit more easily and set that schedule for yourself and give yourself that permission to have a summer, Yes. to have a holiday. Because often as a homeschooling parent, if any of you are homeschooling your children, you never feel that way ever. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was sort of the isolation that it created. You didn't have that support behind you that really helped show you how to teach your children. You're just given a workbook. Here's a workbook, <laughs> read from the workbook, um, have your child fill in the blanks and that's it. And then you're just kind of there. Yeah. And so there's nobody that you can turn to that you can say, you know what, I'm really struggling with this. And my child is not, I don't, oh, I forgot how to teach fractions. <laughs> I mean, I kind of know them, but how do I teach this? Thanks for the workbook, but that doesn't help me at all. Right. So we've created and formulated hundreds of films and we're continuing to do so as we grow, showing you how to teach your children face to face. There is no screen time for your children or our program whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It is all the screens that exist are for you as parents to help educate you to teach your children. And we're also here to offer live films so that you have the opportunity for more complex topics to ask questions and answers similar to like what we're doing right now, but with other educators at the schoolhouse that have a tremendous amount of experience. And so we'll have some celebrity um, film stars from our school here. They should be celebrities. Yes, uh, that'll be working with you every week. You'll have live office hours where you can schedule an appointment with myself. Or if the requirement comes to have one of our expert celebrities join us, they'll join us for those little uh, office hours, I should say, that you can schedule that time to have this kind of one-on-one -on -one time if you need additional support. There is a tremendous amount of information in our website and it's housed beautifully and, and simply for you to, for you to see all in one spot, all in one spot. <laughs> the subjects are clear. Everything is there for you. You have, um, printable material. So all of the materials that Mimosa was talking about, the Montessori materials, we've done our best and our own materials that we've made up, mm -hmm. but we've done our best to put them in a printable format. Not everything can be that. And certainly the bead frame we can't make that move in a principal format, but anything that could be, you can print out on cardstock, you can cut up and you can set up those manipulatives yourself. So you can practice these same techniques that we've shown you how to do at home. Can I say one more thing yes. too? I think what's really cool about this uh, is that you'll be in school with us. So we're starting the school year here in New York, wherever you are, you're starting the school year with us. You're 
if, if we're learning about Native American plants, if we're learning about equivalent equivalency in geometry, that's where everybody is. So it's almost this national community of schoolhouse learners that are together and you'll be able to share information, share photos. I got this idea. What do you think about this? The children can communicate with each other in our two schools in Florida and New York because Tara's got a, a, a beautiful school there in Vero Beach. Um, and as we build more schools, this national community comes together in an even more beautiful way. So the educators that you hear from, um, whether in these live uh, webinars or particularly in these live webinars with the educators, they're teaching that material right now. They're in the same session that you're in. So they're going to be able to be really hands-on, um, even though we're in a virtual format, which I love. Right. And speaking of community, thank you for that segue. So <laughs> one of the best parts I think about- We did program, not rehearse this. No, so not at all. It was pretty good. We just had dinner. <laughs> so <laughs> one of the best parts about our program is actually we have a sort of a community forum for you as parents. So in that area, you can post questions. You can each comment on each other's. I want to say it's it's very similar to sort of a Facebook format, but without the drama of Facebook, right? right? So you can post pictures. You can post questions. There's areas for you to discuss different topics in the curriculum. We are going to have areas for you to um, post book recommendations where our educators post book recommendations, film recommendations for you both as parents or for maybe educational documentaries that would be beneficial for your children to watch. Because although we um, say minimal screen time, we understand that there are going to be some moments. So we try to promote these things that are um, connected to the curriculum, connected to the yeah. curriculum and, and sort of, you know, presents their home. It's a wholesome to the, for them to watch. They're going to get something out of it. It's not just mindless television. That's right. That's and right. so, so we have an area for that. What else do we have? We have so many. There's uh, where we're going to be posting podcasts and many live webinars, not only like the one we're doing now, but there'll be tips and techniques from our different educators in the schoolhouse here. That as well as the principal. As, oh, and then my favorite is going to be Ask Miss Meg. <laughs> Miss Meg is- She's our principal here at the schoolhouse in New York. Yeah. She's and, phenomenal. She's been in education for 22 years, but I often say that when we start to, when communities start to build these schools, the curriculum is incredibly important, but e equally as important is the operation of the school. And she is the principal here. She's been so for the last three years. She's really phenomenal. So she yeah. will be doing some webinars as well. She is. And she's such a wealth of information too. So yeah. um, great person. Yeah. So Ask Miss Meg is going to be a fun kind of advice column that we're going to host for her to give us a lot of her techniques and stuff in the way that she's handled it. But you'll see when you get on, when you actually um, sign up and register and log in, you'll actually have access to that community portion right now. We're not opening up the program until we start school. It's still summer. And I understand that everybody's coming from different areas, but once again, it's still summer. You're still enjoying, hopefully, you know, for me, school never started till after Labor Day. Yeah, same. Yeah. So I know that it's different elsewhere, but we're following the New York school schedule. So we'll open it up. But for the moment, you can get in there and you can take a look at the community and there'll be some stuff that's posted and we're going to get to posting that. And all of our educators are going to get in there starting tomorrow as well, too. So there's a lot of things on there for you. Um, so we really want to get to questions because I know that there are probably quite a few of them and it's a great way to open up uh, dialogue for everyone. The curriculum itself will come in six week increments. So you will have time to prepare, but not feel overwhelmed. It's the same way that our educators here in New York receive the curriculum. So they've just now received the first six week session um, this past Friday. They're here doing a lot of their prep work at the schoolhouse to prepare for the next six weeks. And you will get the benefit of a lot of the work that they're doing. So um, they're putting in, you know, what type of work plan would be best for this or what type of presentation is really going to work here. Here are some tips and tricks on that. Um, so we'll be about a week ahead of you here in the brick and mortar school in order for us to uh, flesh out some of these components of the curriculum. And also Mimosa and I spoke about the fact that we were going to have one of the things that I love that you do here is a curriculum review. So after you release the curriculum, everybody gets about a week or so to review yes. it. Um, maybe a little bit less now for, pre for professional development, but moving down the line, that gets 30 better. minutes. Hi, Heather. Can everybody just mute themselves? Thank you. Yes. I'm sorry. It took me so long. Oh, you're good. If you could just <laughs> mute yourself. That's great. I am. 
Okay. Um, so we actually are going to offer that same option to parents as well. So when you have an opportunity to look through the curriculum, we'll host a high, uh, live webinar like this, where we'll go through it. And then you'll be able to ask some questions and we'll give you some answers and guidance along it while you're planning your journey. So you really are not alone in this at all. Yeah, that's the idea. Help you. Yeah. Turn around. Right here. One more request to me. Yeah, please mute if you're on with us just so we can um, hear each other and have a good discussion. This is Zoom user. I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute this mic. Okay, good. Um, anyway, we want to open up to questions now. Uh, so we have a lot of time to get to that. Please. Uh, oh, this is our TSH moderator. Okay, good. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. He's our director of communications. He's wonderful. Um, so please hit us with any questions that you have. If you want to, I think you can raise your hand if you have one. Yeah, either live chat. or in the chat. Sure. Oh, here we go. Kelly. Now we have oh. him. Oh, Michael. Michael. Oh, oh Michael. You both look uh, wonderful tonight. You guys are like trailblazers in education. I'm super excited for everything you guys are doing can you just explain to me how the materials would work in this type of situation and the process of how the you have obtained the materials or how that works sure actually there's two different options so depending well actually there's four different options so the first one that comes with the program we actually created like i said a majority of the materials we were able to put in a printable format so really all you need is some really strong cardstock and a good printer at which point you can print out the materials, you can laminate them if you want to and cut them up and utilize them. So think about if you're learning fractions. One of the materials that we have here are the mm -hmm. fraction circles and they're literally red circles that are cut into the different fraction sizes. And so we've created those digitally and you can print them out and then you would just cut out the circles and cut them into their fractions and perhaps find different cases in a way to hold them so that they don't get intermingled with the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, and we've done that for a lot of the different materials and all of the things that you would need. The other alternative is to actually purchase the materials. So we partnered up with Alice and Montessori for these particular Montessori materials. We have more materials than just Montessori, but for the, for the manipulatives from Montessori, we partnered up with Allison. And depending on the space that you have and their financial resources, you can purchase either a bookshelf worth of materials, which we've kind of whittled down where the most used, most needed to be tactile manipulative and which don't take up too much space. Right, if you have limited space in your home environment. Right, so you can basically fit everything on a bookshelf. Then we know that some people have a spare room that they utilize for homeschooling their children, where they may have a, more than just a bookshelf, but not quite necessarily enough room for a classroom worth of materials. So with that, we have created sort of that middle of the road package where it's the bookshelf plus more um, other things that you might find beneficial. And then, of course, there's always the option, should you, um, like myself, who's decided to open up a satellite location, have the whole classroom worth of materials. So I've decided to rent a space. We've now moved to a bigger and better location this year from last year, which I'm really excited about. It's beautiful. It is. It's really awesome. And I can't wait to show. I see some of the parents here who are with me, which I'm oh, really good. excited to show them uh, once it's all set up. But um which it's almost there. And so you can purchase the whole classroom with the materials as well through them. And we can help um, answer any middle of the road questions for that as well too. But those are the different ways. Mm -hmm. And we can certainly, you you can go on to the TSH Anywhere site and see some of the materials. Um, they're they're phenomenal. If, if many of you have never handled these materials, Tara and I bo both went for elementary education training for two years to learn how to use these materials. And now the team here is going to be imparting them to you. But it goes from grammar boxes, which are educating children on the nine parts of speech, which when we were children was like, <laughs> you know, how boring is grammar? But this is not, this is hands-on and you're moving it like a puzzle and they're gonna remember the color coordination. And then there are a lot of beads because remember math is abstract. There's no such thing as three, right? There's three of something. And so you need to give the child moving through this development stage something to manipulate, something to have in front of them. In fact, so many of our educators here, we have the highest number of AMI trained educators under one roof in the United States. That's huge. AMI is Association Montessori International. We choose that teacher training program, not because 
um, it's Montessori necessarily, but because it is such a thorough program when you're speaking to the child and childhood development and how we get the very best out of them. And so these materials are really meant to take them to that next development stage of abstraction. But in math, they really need to use those beads and manipulate them. Another question. No questions? Oh my gosh, yes. Hi, Ashley, hello. Hi. <laughs> um, so when it comes to the six week curriculum, like, you know, six weeks in advance, game that, Obviously, there's less than six weeks between now and September 11th. So when will that be coming out in full? I'm sorry. Sense? It's the, the, the session itself is six weeks. The releasing of the curriculum is a week before. Oh, OK, perfect. Yes. And each se and so you will get that sex six week session a week before your session starts in order to do some of the prep and watching some mm -hmm. of the films. So the seventh. Um, but on the seventh, we'll have it that week. Yes. Thank you. Which is just after Labor Day, so we're staying true to our school set. And you'll see it'll, it'll come on the website. You'll have it'll, it'll when it's ready. It'll, you'll have access once you have access to the website when it opens up. You'll see when you register, it'll say it's still summer. <laughs> and once that goes away and the website opens up, that's when you'll have access to the curriculum all the printable materials. Okay, right now you have, access to the register, you have access to the community okay. aspects. So you can start to get to know each other. Okay. Okay. I just do you have another question? <laughs> I do, sorry. Okay. Um, I think we have someone still, yeah. do you have them? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna just mute you. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, one other one. So the curriculum is gonna come into the website and then you can print it off for looking at it or just keep it on there. You yes. can, yes. And just to know that when I started the schoolhouse, it was very important for me to adhere to standards. There's not a problem with standards. You know, I say this a lot. I think a third grader should know how to measure. It's just, are we having a torture session, getting them there to love measuring things or are they really understanding the root of measurement? So you will see in the curriculum that New York state standards, which still are the bar for, it's still the bar for state standards, are in the curriculum, you'll see them. So when you're covering lessons, which are very simple to follow, you're gonna see what standards those are hitting. That's useful for you when you're reporting on your homeschool journey. You know, it may be useful for you just to know, oh, okay, you know, yeah. I'm making all these, these hitting all these benchmarks. Um, but we did that throughout the last five years so that you also are aware of what the standards are looking um, for us to teach in the public school system. Um, there are some standards that I've omitted, about 10% of them, because I find them to be completely ludicrous and nothing to do with um, how and why children learn. Um, but the majority of them are coming straight from New York State standards. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Sarah, oh, go ahead. I see a question in the corner. Yeah, who is that? Hi. Yes, hi. Go ahead. Hi. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so I live in a rural town in Alaska. And actually one of my, um, the, how I found out about this was from one of your students in Florida. Um, oh, and I have a question about sort of like the monthly schedule and any sort of flexibility because um, sometimes people leave for a couple months at a time here. And I was wondering if there's any sort of um protocol for transitioning the student like if I had an eye on school with several students and they left for two months at a time um is there any way to either like have that be a break in mm -hmm. the homeschool curriculum or to transitioning to the parent taking over and like me giving materials to them and them doing it that way mm -hmm. so are you looking to open up a satellite yourself in Alaska is that what you're asking yeah. So I think and do people leave in January and February? <laughs> okay. Yeah. In that assumption. So you could, so I don't yeah, know. I mean, yeah. I think the answer is 
Yes, because you could put it back right. to the parent. I mean, we created this to be parent friendly. We didn't create this necessarily. Now, I mean, many of you know that 300,000 educators have left education in the last three years. So there are so many educators out there that are looking to be a part of something bigger. But in terms of just a parent using this program, that was our original yes. intent is that they are able to go on and use the films, use the materials um, to fill that two month gap. So one of the things that I found that most homeschoolers in my homeschooling journey loved was the flexibility of homeschooling, that freedom to travel, to go where you want to go and to not have to have traditional schooling from, you know, nine to three, they may be their child slept till one o'clock in the afternoon, and they wanted to do later or whatever that was. So this sort of allows for that as well. So part of what you're, what you're asking is absolutely, I'm not so sure you could say, well, we can take that break um, from, you know, January through March because we'll be operating then and, and then we're closed for the summer. However, you can absolutely give it to the parents at that point yeah. to take over. And you're all following. We're all on the same path. We all have that same six weeks of curriculum that we're following. So 100% and you can guide your families accordingly, you know, however you wish to continue mm -hmm. that journey, but that can go for the part-time that you're in person and then the part-time that they're at home. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I have another question about okay. sort of like the age range, um, of, is it, maybe I missed it and it's on the website, but how is it structured for age? So, um, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so we service childhood. So childhood is technically zero to 12 years old. But in our, we just started a toddler program here in New York, which starts at 18 months, but the Anywhere program starts at three years old. So three years old until 12 years old. And then we will be beta testing a middle school program this year. And that will go until eighth grade. So those are the age ranges. Those age ranges are broken up into very specific development stages. And what you find in the curriculum is made for that development stage. So we have a, we have a primary program, which is about, which is ages uh, three to six. And then we have our elementary program, which is ages six to 12. So when okay. you sign up for a curriculum, you sign up for one age range. Mm -hmm. And then if you want the next one, you have to pay for that one as well. Mm -hmm. Well, sort of? yeah, you, you pay per child. So if your child falls into the zero to six age range, then you're uh, three to six, then you're, you're signing up that child. And if you have another child that's for the elementary, then you're signing up for that child. So you pay per child? Yes. Okay. And sorry, how much was that per child? So it's, it's $150 a month or $1,250 per year. Gotcha. And it's purposefully kept at that low level of cost. So we know that the online programs, I saw one, I talked yeah, to you two weeks 10, ago, that was $10,000 for an online program. And it was all I, screen time. I never forget the mission of what we're doing. And that is to change school in America. So everybody has to have access to this. It can't be this elitist program. Um, and so we are purposefully at this point, keeping it as low as we can and really just paying for our educator time on the webinars. Okay, one more question and I'm done. <laughs> it just sure. popped into my head. So I currently teach at a preschool and I have been considering getting my Montessori teacher training to bring in some real curriculum and some um, more grounded, um, yeah. And so would it be possible or would it even make sense to bring, to do this instead? Or would you recommend going to get um, a training for Montessori? So <laughs> that's a great question. It is such a good question. Yeah. You know, I always say do both. You can do this while you're getting your training. We are one of only seven training hubs in the United States here in New York. We have a primary training program that starts in January and we are working to open our elementary training center in Florida in a year from now. So the, the training is, I mean, it's just incredible Yeah, it is. as you get so transformed as a person to go through the training and understanding the child and what their needs are. That's what I would say, in addition to the materials. But the 200 films at the end of this year would be closer to 400 films that we have here on the website. Very easy for a parent or an educator to understand. And utilizing a lot of those techniques that yeah. 
that you do get from training. So it would only benefit and support you ultimately when you do decide to go to training. It's a good question though, right? It's a great question. I can't say no to the training because it really was, it was really an experience. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Can I ask a question? Yeah, Yeah. please. Hey, um, so is, is it 400 for Vero Beach because we're going through you as the educator? Mm. Yeah, so that actually, so Jenny, um, how are you, Jenny? <laughs> Jenny's joining us our Vero Beach location with her. You can't daughter. see me very well, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so no, so that covers uh, not only the portion that you're getting online, but also all of the expenses that come with operating a physical location, right? And the educators that we have joining us, and the many expenses that come with that. So, and the hundred fifty is if I do it, if I do it myself and just use the cool. curriculum. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks. No problem. Anyone else? No questions? Hi, good evening. I do have a question. Please, hi. Hi. Um, So my question is, if you have like a, if you're a one-on-one homeschooling with this curriculum and you don't necessarily want to do a satellite location, um, would the, like, if, when you become a member of the community, would it connect you with other parents in your area? Is there like a way to search for other parents in your area who maybe might, might want to do like, you know, some activities together, like go to the library, like to have like a little, even though you don't have like, you're not in a satellite location per se, you can still get together with other parents who are using this curriculum in your area. So would there be a way to do it by like zip code or by, you know, area? This is Avita, by the way. Yeah, I know. I can tell it's your voice. (laughs) Hi, Amita. Hello. So you actually can very simply by going into the let's discuss portion and just say, hi, my name is Ovita and I'm in this area. Are there any other parents who are using this who are near me? It's really, you don't even have to look them up. People can, um, you know, own it themselves if they want to, but we do have an option that you could reach out to me privately and let me know that you want to be connected to other people in your area. And those that have that same desire. In fact, I think it's on the sign up sheet. And mm-hmm. so if you have a desire to be connected with other people in your area, we can connect you with those parents. Some may not. So we've given it that option to either respect your privacy, or if you want to open yourself up to it, you can certainly do that. But thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I really encourage everyone to check out the community platform. I mean, I think it's better than any social media it platform is. because it's all about education and it's all about your child. And um, it's it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, and it just, Avita, to your point, it allows us to just be talking about our, our children, just be talking about, you know, building the, the best possible schooling environment for them. Um, and I'm, I'm really impressed with it. I just got on last week and started posting. So any other questions for, from anyone out there who would like to know process? I have a question. Yes. Hi. Hi. So we are about like a one hour drive away. Um, which I wish we lived closer. (laughs) Where do you live? Um, we're We're in Whitestone in Queens. Oh, okay. Um, so it is about an hour. We have family in Northport, so I'm familiar with the drive. Oh, okay. But um, I'm just curious, like, if you have people like myself who are considering doing this and aren't, like, super far from the school, would you guys ever consider, like, for events and things like that, maybe having, like, other New York families or New Jersey or, like, somewhat local um, to come for, like, school events? Just because I know that's one of the things I'm trying to convince my husband on is you know the social part of it unfortunately around here in our area there's like no one really that I know of that is homeschooling um and obviously we do like extracurriculars and that sort of thing but um I don't know I'm just curious if that would be something you guys would consider I know you guys do a lot of like special things in the school so absolutely (laughs) I think that's a great idea uh, we have a beautiful campus here and would love to do that. You know, even if we got mm-hmm. together four times a year, uh, yeah, like something. Sarah can certainly do that at her location for yeah. families that are throughout Florida. Um, it's all about us sharing our power and taking back our power as moms and dads. 
Um, the dads at our school, by the way, are really, really active. So uh-huh. I want to say uh, no uh, joke. I'm like half considering moving to Northport just because of you guys. <laughs> you did that. No joke. I moved to Santa really? for the school. Our, our plan when it first is to up, move. Yep, we yeah, moved. we're like yeah. planning to move to Long Island. And I'm like, okay, like this is like literally the only school I've seen that has ever caught my attention. <laughs> but I also so. want you to say whether you move to Northport or we invite you for events and I'll talk to well, Tara and I yeah. will talk about that as well as with Miss Meg, who's the principal here. Um, the third option is always to open a school. And it mm-hmm. just isn't as hard as you think it is. We've paved the way. So, you know, it's a building. There's tons of educators out there. We've done all the paperwork. You fall under the school. Yeah. Um, Former so I'm, teacher I'm, myself. There I'm you just, go. There you <laughs> it go. sounds and intimidating so, though. <laughs> it's not. not. It's really, we've <laughs> done all the intimidating stuff. I mean, and this school is thriving in a way that I can't even describe to you. And look what we've gone through. You know, we got hit with the no exemptions in 19. We got hit with COVID in 2021. Um, You know, it's been one thing after the next of, oh, you know, are children really learning because they're happy? You know, I mean, (laughs) that's just one of a thousand idiotic things every day. So, you know, the reason why we're so successful is we're child first period. Mm -hmm. We only make decisions based on the child and what their needs are. And everyone who works here, all 36 of us and more for you, I think that number is now up to 40, um, understands that. And that's why we're here. So don't be afraid, but I understand why you don't want to jump in tonight at, at three minutes to seven, but maybe that's something we talk about in the future. Right. I know. Imagine I get off the call and I'm like, so this is what my plan is. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I went to my husband People who are familiar with the school know this, but I went to my husband saying, we're opening a school. And he said, absolutely not. There's no way. We're opening a school. And yeah. I said, what do you think we're going to do worse than public school? And I'm a very vocal, I don't mean to insult anybody, but public school has had 150 years to figure it out. So I'm done. Um, so I don't mean to insult people yeah. in public school. I just, these are kids. We're not selling cars or oven mittens or mitts. Uh, we're, these are children and we're just kind of squandering them every single day. So he said, no, so don't fear. Here we are um, going across the fear. It's, it's open and it's thriving. And it is my privilege. I love it. My, it is my privilege if that's the steps that you choose to take to be able to help guide you in that. It's yeah. really not as challenging. I went through it last year. We, like Mimosa said, we pave the way to make it really simple. We have just sort of a checklist of things that you need to do, and it does not have to cost you a tremendous amount of money. It can just Mm -hmm. just start that way. And then it builds and it grows and it gains momentum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Mimosa, we have a question in the chat. Okay. I have two questions. Will the lessons remain available after the six weeks in case you fall behind? Yes, absolutely. So the lessons are always there. Um, once you come on board and you are part of our community, you will be able to learn anything you want. So if you're on vacation and you've taken some time and, or let's say you just have a break in your work and you want to go learn these five math lessons, you'll be able to do that. And the curriculum in terms of lessons, you'll get particular lessons before that curriculum hits your mailbox, but they don't go away. So you'll have plenty of time. And then how much time should parents anticipate preparing learning the lessons before they implement them with their child? Oh, that's a good question. It is. It is. And it's a hard one to answer because it all depends on, you know, how familiar you are with the subject and, you know, how quickly you pick up on it. So it could be, you know, the, the videos and the films are made to be anywhere between four to about 10 minutes maximum, but mostly they're in that five to seven minute range teaching you how to teach your child. We are under the assumption that you know most of these things because they're elementary math. Yeah. Our trainer used to say to us, you know, this, this right. is not that you hard, know, but yeah. you are also being refreshed in a way that is more child centric rather than doing a ditto. And right. so the way that you're now teaching yes. these things would be a little different. I would say, you know, if you watch the five to 10 minute lesson, mm-hmm. you practice a couple of times, you're ready to teach it. For that. So let's say we've done it. Let's separate it by subject. If you're teaching addition, right? There's multiple different ways and materials that you can use to teach addition. So you can watch one of those videos the night before, practice it a few times, like Mimosa said, and then you actually have a good week or two to even three weeks worth of your child practicing that material and that lesson over and over again. So one 
film. Oh, that's such a good point. Yes. So, so, so if you are using, there's something called the checkerboard to teach multiplication, which right. is so great yeah, and so tactile. But once you teach that lesson, Tara, that's genius because mm-hmm. your, your child is going to be practicing that until they understand it. And that is what is so another great thing about the schoolhouse and what you're going to do as homeschool parents is that Alexander Graham Bell, who I'm obsessed with, who invented the telephone. I feel like I need to say that now because the dumbing down of society, it's like no one knows he invented the telephone. Um, He hated the telephone, by the way. He threw his own telephone out of his house. Um, I I agree. Yeah, he, he couldn't stand and his wife was deaf, so she never got to use it. But anyway. He said one of the worst things we could do for children is to give them 45 increment, 45 minute increments to learn. It's ridiculous. You're going to learn this just biology. And then by the way, when that bell rings, or I tell you, you're going to go off and read war and peace. And even though your mind is in biology or math or something else, you're going to go do this. It's just not how humans learn. Think about how, how you learn when you want to dive into something, you want to stay in that. So Tara's absolutely right. They're going to be practicing checkerboard. You'll be able to go back and say, Hey, I see my child doing this. Okay. Let me check that film one more time just to make sure. Um, but like checkerboard is something you'll get, you'll get very easily. We've also done it in stages. So there's part one, part two, part three, part part four, and it continues to the, um, level of difficulty. So part one is of course, how you introduce it. And that lesson may, your child may pick up on it in an hour, or it may take your child two weeks. That's where the beauty of follow the child and following your particular child goes well with this. And it may take your child. But if your child picks it up, then you can say, hey, you know what? They're ready for the next. I'm ready, mom. I got it. Great. Give me 10 minutes. You can go watch part two (laughs) and then you can come right back and you can progress with your child. But you're going to have a lot of time once you get a little familiar with the materials and how to teach those lessons. Yeah, yeah, they're going to they're going to be working independently and that's going to give you more time to prepare. So it's it's a new way of homeschooling. I also wanted to share one more thing um, that you're going to have your mind blown in terms of what you're going to learn. I get really excited about this because the number one thing our educators tell me, I always have, I have meetings every six weeks with our educators and the curriculum just to make sure they're comfortable. Do they have questions is that they learn so much. So for instance, something really difficult, more difficult because it's more abstract, like the earth and sun, we have part one, two, and three, that will be a live webinar and those webinars will be recorded. So if you're not able to make it, you can go on later, but you'd be surprised how many full-fledged adults don't know about revolution and rotation. I think sometimes they even think the sun revolves around us. (laughs) It's, you know, these are very basic, important things for children to know the perpendicular rays of the sun, how that heats up parts of the globe. Those things are something that you're going to want to ask questions during the webinar. And if you can't make it, you'll see the questions that are asked. Also, I want one thing, theme that goes through every film that we remind our parents is to have fun, have fun with these lessons. It's not just about teaching this lesson and moving on to the next one. There's a lot of reinforcement. There's a lot of games that come along with it. And every method that we're showing you how to teach it always involves reminding yourself to have fun teaching this stuff and have fun working with your child. So it's not just preparing and making sure they learn. You'll have a lot of laughs. It's really about engaging with them. Um, One thing I want to say, there's only two rules for educators that work at the schoolhouse, no gossip, no politics. That's it. So we've managed to have five years of educators, not a lick of politics and no gossip right there is like a Nobel Peace Prize. (laughs) There's no way that's happening. But Tara adds for homeschoolers, no stress. Yeah. Right. We we want you to enjoy this process that you, you, childhood is so short and the process that you get to have with them while learning. Right. We have another question. So it says a couple questions. Are there tests at the end of each six week session or anything that needs to be submitted to our school districts as proof that we're homeschooling? So that's the first part of the question. Here's the great part about TSH Anywhere. You get access to Transparent Classroom. That is the software program that we use that we've been populating and working with for the last five years. So you are able to, and that's how we keep track of how many children are in the program at one time. So you'll enter your child's name, information, Joey Stein or something. And then you'll be able to track your child. I did this lesson. I gave this lesson. 
I'm noticing that they are in the process of practicing that lesson. They haven't quite achieved mastery yet. How we achieve mastery is either practicing that lesson for you. So they're teaching you or another child. That means you've mastered something if you can teach it. And we have weekly mastery worksheet practice in math and spelling. Those are the two things that take repetition in order to get right. So those things, as well as all the materials that you create are housed in Transparent Classroom. And they're also housed in your beautiful portfolios that you'll create that we walk you through creating. And that's what you need um, for any state that you're in. I also want to just add to that discussing worksheets, because that's one of the things yeah. that we are actually limiting. Yes. Compared to other programs. Well, you should never give a worksheet unless that child understands what they just learned, because then it's the worst thing you can do. They start to fail themselves, right? So we are going to be offering some worksheets as the year progresses for those mastery topics to showing them that they've actually understood it, but they're also to be used in, and augmented with the materials. They're not only meant to be used on their own, Yeah. Um, but we're not very worksheet heavy no. and we are purposefully avoiding that. We do our children in elementary two, where we're sitting tonight, we'll do five worksheets a week. So one per day. They do it at the end of the morning work cycle, not in the morning where you're ready to do materials and learn new things at the end, not quite the afternoon, but at the end of the morning work cycle, we've really made this curriculum align with human behavior. And so at that point they will do a worksheet and they can choose if it's math or if it's spelling, but they're completing that because of the practice component that you really need to in terms of math operations. Um, it's another there's, part of the question. Yeah. Right? It says, can parents take the AMI training or is it for teachers only? Everybody can take it. Anyone and everyone. Um, it's life altering. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Tara is an attorney. I think she would say it's right up there with going to law school. It was, yeah. I mean, it was very intense. It was a lot of work. It mm -hmm. was a tremendous amount of work. It was every day for hours and hours every day. So. But, but also if you're obsessed with childhood development and pedagogical sciences, we are, I mean, we go to bed at night thinking, why do children do that? And why did they react that way? And we presented this material. Why did they have that take on it? That's kind of all we're thinking about all day long. And if that's you and you love pedagogical science as much as we do, it's the best program you could possibly be a part of. I learned so much. I really so do. Did I. I know. <laughs> Any other questions out there? Either yes, I have another five. question. I have another question. Yes. Um, so the parent now is going to watch the video by themselves, correct? Yes. Or are they going to watch it with the child? And the or is the parent going to watch the video, master the video, then teach the child the lesson? Or are they going to like participate together and learn the lesson? Which way would you guys think is the best way for the parent to handle that? My uh, advice is always that just the parents watch the videos and they master that lesson themselves and then they go and teach their child. It is given to you in a way that is not given to the child. It's not taught for the child, it's taught for the parent in those films. Mm -hmm. So it's done way faster than we would teach a child because mm -hmm. I don't necessarily need to teach you how to add one and one. You know how to add one and one. But when you're teaching your child how to add one and one, you're going a lot slower. Yeah. So those videos are taught to the parents. They're directed at the parents. There are some jokes to the parents. <laughs> we may talk a little bit about what you're to expect from your child in response. And so they're really just meant for <laughs> parents. Yeah, right? <laughs> just, yeah. So they're really just meant for parents' eyes only for you to watch. And we really vehemently... <laughs> Dis discourage children watching and learning from screens. Yeah, you retain, at zero to 12 years old, you retain only about 4% of what you learn on a screen. So that's why when I see these things come through my Insta feed for obscene amounts of money that put a child in front of the screen, it keeps me up at night. It is just, and I also just wonder, we know how far behind we are because schools, not the schoolhouse, we did not go to online learning. We were open during COVID. Um, schools were online and we saw now the numbers, um, I'm about to do a whole piece about the numbers out there that, you know, in terms of reading and writing in this country at the eighth grade level, we're at a 31% proficiency, 31%. 
In civics, we are at 11% proficiency. And this is a bipartisan group, the National Report Card in Washington, D.C. This isn't some, you know, one side or the other newspaper reporting. Um, so we've got a real crisis here. And the fact that we would put kids on screens when there also is, we understand people have to work. So some, you know, we know in homeschool families, sometimes one person gives that up to be the primary teacher, which is awesome. But there are also a ton of educators out there um, that want to be a part of something bigger than them. So that's a good way to go too. And then we also had another question, why AMI instead of AMS? So personally, um, so Association Montessori International is one teacher training for, Mon for the Montessori component. And then there's the American Society of, or American Montessori Society. I have actually sent educators to train at both. And I find that AMI is much more comprehensive. So it isn't just about the material in front of you. It is about the deep philosophical reasons for that material. And that comes into play time and time again when you're learning each material. And so for somebody, for the both yeah. of us that are so passionate about pedagogical science and really seeing the child, um, I just felt that AMS didn't go deep enough. It's much easier to get AMS training. They have many more uh, centers when you become an AMI training center, as we are here, you need permission from uh, the International Montessori Group out of the Netherlands. So um, it's a much bigger deal and there are less trainers doing the real authentic component. So I hope that answers your question. I would just like to say that my wife is AMI trained and I, it looked like it's the Rolls Royce of training. Yeah, it truly is. And don't forget that the majority of our um, uh, teachers here, educators here have master's degrees. Some of them, a good majority of them came from public school. So they are already trained at the creme de la creme, so to speak, of teaching in a school. All of you can do your own research. I mean, start digging into a school's curriculum, start digging into what the credentials are. Some have an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, no other training in terms of working with children. And the folks that come here who have gone to great master's programs have had zero training on childhood development, zero. Not to mention the materials and how you connect a curriculum, all of the other things that come with that. So um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a big dream for us to have a school in every town, um, mostly because we're gonna need to train a ton of teachers. And that's why we have the two training centers, both here in New York, it's currently operating and then in Florida, because that's gonna be essential. And that was one of my favorite things about the AMI training. What I was saying that mm -hmm. it did, there was a tremendous amount of work too, but it was in-depth work. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't and, and no part of it was uh, futile. No. It, was, it was all interwoven and it was very heavy on the psychology which I really enjoyed. I enjoyed that too. Yeah. And Tara had to, Tara and I had to draw about 200 pictures of leaves hand-drawn. <laughs> so we That's really know true. our botany. <laughs> um, let's see, sorry. Um, unrelated to the Everywhere program, but is the brick and mortar school in Northport full for the upcoming school year? Oh, we yes. are, <laughs> um, we are full, um, but here's the thing. Our list constantly changes. There are people who bail out of New York and move to Florida or Texas. There are people <laughs> that, um, you know, for whatever reason, decide that they're going to go across country. It's usually people that leave the area um, when they leave out. the school or, or they age out. Yeah, of course. So we do off, not oftentimes, but sometimes have a specific age opening. So that shouldn't deter you from applying. And um, we're actually trying to expand to 250 children here on campus and put a second floor um, on our building here. So we're trying, we're trying. We'll either open more or expand here or both at the same time. Okay, good. Any other questions for any, from anyone there? Yes, hi, was that Ashley? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I had to unmute it. That's okay. um, so kind of going back a couple of questions ago, um, when you were talking about, you know, eight, um, eight different classes, you know, public school, stuff like that, and 45 minute increments, just kind of going back to that, refreshing everyone's mind. Um, how many categories per day per, for the curriculum, or is it set up by like, 
this is what just needs to get established during this week. And however you guys move is how you move or is it like three, six, nine? does that make sense? That's a good question. Yes. So one of the things in our research in the last 11 years was how educators respond to the curriculum, because that's everything. And one of the things that they really despise is being micromanaged. But one of the things that they really love is having a plan. And so we went through this process of finding the balance. So the six weeks, you probably know this in traditional school, they're units and you're finishing so many units in a week. And if you don't finish those units or if a child is falling behind, too bad for you. You just don't understand fractions for the rest of your life, right? You can never make a <laughs> pancake mix. I don't know. Right? So this is what happens. So in the American Emergent Curriculum, it's six weeks and you do the planning. So you'll take out your planner. I still use a traditional, our director of communications is laughing at me because I still use a traditional from the eighties black book with the big um, squares, yeah, me too. right? Because I can see it. I'm sort of showing my age now. I can see it all laid out. And so you might decide there are some things in order. When we do the great stories, we like to tell the story of the universe, then the coming of life, then the coming of humans, then writing and math because that's sort of the chronology of the world. But in terms of what else is in that six week period, you might say to yourself, you know what, we're traveling for that week. So I'm gonna start doing this on the week after, or I have a, there's a great um, something going on at the Met in New York City or wherever you may be talking about the history of writing. And that's opening four weeks from now. I'm going to do that then at the end of the session. So here at the schoolhouse in New York, what happens is our educators get together and they decide when to roll out the program. For the first time this year, I've actually given you an example of that, though, in the curriculum. And we just had meetings today and the educators were like, yeah. yes, thank you. Um, so they get educators, parents that will become educators. You get enough freedom to feel like, ah, oh, this is exciting. I'm on an adventure with my child, but enough structure where you feel like, okay, I'm meeting everything I need to meet each week. And there's, there's, you're going to find Ashley, there's a lot of time. I wrote into the curriculum this year. There's five days when these kids come to school here in New York yeah. and in Vero beach, you don't do any work there. Well, you no. do a ton of work the first five days, but it's not sitting down at a table and chair. You're establishing this year, our, our theme is team. You're establishing teams. We establish kinship laws because the Cherokee Indians, that's what they use, the Cherokee Native Americans rather, that's what they used. Um, so we're going with kinship laws in the classroom. We're developing who are the individual members of the classrooms and of the classroom and how do you interact with the team. So it's a lot of building your environment before you get to that six day of instruction. And the educators love that because they just get to know their kids. And the kids get to know each other. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Okay. And then I just have one more question. Um, are, again, sorry, but backing up to the webinar portion that you were talking about, how it was going to be recorded. Um, I believe it was recording, you know, something along the lines of the sun, the moon, things of that sort. Yeah. Um, so that was what it was. Are all the webinars going to be recorded so we can go back and look at them and kind of dissect of whatever we want, like, oh, I have a sense of my notes or silly stuff like that? Yes. Yes. Awesome. And, yeah. And sun and earth parts one, two, and three, you're going to love. I mean, it's actually using, you know, a light, a globe, the spring and fall equinoxes, yeah. the winter and summer solstices, you know, teaching the things that children really know, need to know to solve, to scaffold, to solve the next problem that might be coming up. We can't do, for instance, we don't talk about climate change in our curriculum because they need to understand climates first before they go to, oh my God, the polar bears are dying. What am I gonna do about it at five years <laughs> old? Nothing, <laughs> because you can't do anything at five years old, but what you can do is understand the planet, how it works. And then as you get into middle school and high school, then you can have those bigger discussions about climate change, about you know getting into politics, getting into current events. But this is all about zero to 12, the foundation. 
So why do reptiles live in certain places? We do big lessons in cycle three about ecology and how things are connected. Um, and that's just a real important point about the curricula. We, we are teaching them the roots of everything because if you don't know that, how are you gonna go on to solve bigger global problems in the future for our kiddos? hundred percent. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for the great questions. We have about 10 more minutes. Is there anyone else that wants to throw out a question to us? Yes, I have one more question. Is yeah. family engagement a part of this curriculum? Oh, I love that. That's so great. Yeah. So uh, we often get the question here at the schoolhouse, do we give homework? And we don't give traditional homework. The science, the evidence behind, you can Google this very simply, behind traditional homework is horrific. So oftentimes you'll have parents going to the drugstore, trying to put together that science thing in the last minute because it's just, it, you know, they struggle with their children. They don't understand common core math. Um, none of it seems to be pleasant. And not only do we know that from talking to people, but that's also what the evidence tells us. They're not learning anything more. And so at the schoolhouse, we have something called family engagement. And what that is, is once a week, you will get an assignment that is pertaining to what we are teaching and studying, collaborating on with our learners in the classroom. This is interesting for homeschool because you're hands-on all the time, but likely there are gonna be other members of your family that might not be homeschooling, right? So it could be a, a grandparent, it could be a father or a mother that work outside the home. And once a week, you'll be able to collaborate on something. So for instance, in elementary two this year, when we do um, the story of the universe, one of the family engagement components is to, um, was it to create a, I'm not recalling right now, but it, it was something, it was something to the effect of what does the night sky look like here in North America? And what does the night sky look like in South America? And draw that, talk about it, research it together. So you could go outside as a family, look at the night sky in North America, and then research together, what does it look like in Peru and start to make those connections with your family. And then you would bring it either together as a family and talk about it, or in our case of Tara and I, you would bring it to school and they discuss it. It's just an added bonus to the curriculum. It's also a really fun way that you can include, like Momo said, extended families or yeah. extended siblings. So if you have children that are in high school who are not part of this program, you can actually include them in those things. They yeah, can do something yeah. with their older brother or sister, maybe their cousins and stuff as well, because they're actually fun activities. Yeah. They're not homework. Yes. Sometimes it's cooking. Sometimes yeah. it's a coming up with the report. Yes. Yeah, sometimes, oftentimes it's a documentary. We have coming up on the TSH Anywhere site in the next few weeks is probably one of the most curated I want to say it is because I spent, I used to be in the entertainment industry. So I look at film and television a lot. Um, it probably is the single most curated film and television list for children. And so we know that there are times when your child is going to be on a screen, as Tara alluded to before, we want to make sure that they are watching something that they're, that is supporting what they're learning in the classroom. So we do some work this year on South America and Lake Titicaca, and there's a great show called Most Dangerous Ways to School. Uh, and we recommend that for parents in family engagement to watch the children that have to cross Lake Titicaca to go to school, an hour long journey every day. I mean, it just creates all sorts of things, empathy and connection, but also that South American connection that we're making this year. And it gives you as a family an opportunity to discuss more. Yeah. Right. So even though your child is watching a screen, you're watching it together and then you're bringing upon discussion afterwards. So yeah, there's, exactly. there's some reinforcement behind it as well. Yeah. So good. Uh, anyone else? All right. I feel so like, we still, yes, we have one more, one more okay. question it says, says oh, Charles, Charles, what is the question? Would you like and to read it to us? Is the homeschool program appropriate for children who are receiving CPSE services such as speech and OT? Oh, absolutely. So the question was, if your child receives services, is the curriculum appropriate for them? I'm trying. I'm trying to stop saying hundred percent because everybody's <laughs> saying hundred percent. I'm so tired. But hundred percent. But hundred <laughs> percent. Um, you know, remember that. Oftentimes when children are struggling, there's a couple of things happening. There are legitimate 
neuroscientific struggles, right? Neuro, neuro, um, neuroscience happening within their brains in which you need to look for outside help to help them make those connections. But oftentimes it has to do with movement and manipulation of materials. So when your child is going through childhood, let's say from zero to six years old, they need to be moving every day. They need to be manipulating materials. Our kindergartners here walk upwards of 10,000 steps a day. The average kindergartner is 2,000 steps a day. So that ability to use the things that maybe they're struggling with, with speech, with fine motor skills, with gross motor skills, all of these materials and the way the curriculum is laid out is to help that child achieve success. And we know that so many of the children today that have a lot of these struggles, these challenges, it's because they're sitting all day or they're in environments where they're not supported. And we know what the childhood science is telling us. And that is they need to move, they need to manipulate, they need to be using materials. Yeah. And so it's actually a perfect match. And here at the schoolhouse, we have about uh, 15 children who have IEPs and uh, the parents are just so happy about you know, the changes they've seen in their child with the additional help that they get. I also wanna say that that goes, uh, for lack of a better word, doubly <laughs> at home, right? When you're mm -hmm. homeschooling, you can give that one-on-one -on -one attention to your child because often a child that has those particular needs, if you're homeschooling your child, there's no reason why this program can't be used as well, right? You're giving that additional structure. You know, I, I know for my program in Vero Beach, I don't have that ability to have children that have those extra needs just because that's not where my training is at. Yeah. Um, and we don't have enough like you have much more here in, in New York. And when mm -hmm. we become a school, we'll have that option. Right. But for homeschooling your child, 100%. I mean, the tools are there to help them. In fact, I would argue that it would be even more, it would make more sense to use this type of learning than it would in the other because they're more interested, they're more engaged, they're more tactile. Well, absolutely. Right. Because also if you're getting those services somewhere else right. and then you're tethered all day long, it just right. creates the perfect storm, right? And then we see a lot at the schoolhouse in Northport. Um, you know, the cutoff seems to be seven-year-old boys who will come <laughs> in here and they are right on the edge of hating school forever. I mean, it really, they get to the point where they are just, they've been on lockdown in regular school and they need a place to really express themselves, to learn, to have a real education. And the fact that we continue to do this to children and nobody's really doing thing, anything about it is, you know, it's our passion every day to make that change. Any other questions out there? Okay, we're good. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, you can go online today at TSH Anywhere and check it out. Yeah. We're gonna have another webinar on September 7th if you'd like to sign up. That webinar is gonna be much more intensive. We're gonna have our screens up. We're gonna show you how to walk through the process. Um, also how to get into films to get the materials going as well as um, the worksheets and other supportive. Yeah, so we are going to be, yep, we're going to be adding the worksheets as we go along as the curriculum progresses, but we're going to walk you through every single aspect of the website. So, for, but that'll only be for those of you that actually register. <laughs> right. So th this means that you're ready to start the program. Right. Um, the portal itself will open September 7th and you will have access to the curriculum. And then we'll be seeing a lot of each other as we go through this year and uh, collectively change school in America. I want to thank everybody who's joined us today. If you have friends that are interested in the grassroots effort to change school, there's a lot of people coming from the bigger effort to try to change it. It's not working. It's moms and dads who really take something this great and start to spread it. Please let your friends know. We want them to join us in this mission. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone. Thank have a great so much. day. Appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. you. Mm-hmm.